the past few years, there's been an important development in the adoption of EVs, and that is the adoption of SAE J3400, also known as NAX, also known as the Tesla port. SAE standard J3400 does open more vehicles to Tesla's supercharging network, but more importantly, and in the long term, it creates a single standard for all EVs when it comes to charging. But the standard is more than just about swapping out ports on EVs. It's an opportunity for the industry to make EV charging better. To find out what SAE J3400 means beyond just giving vehicles access to Tesla's supercharger network, I traveled to the University of Delaware to talk to the chair of the SAE J3400 task force. My name is Rodney McGee. I am a research professor here at the University of Delaware, and I am the chair of the SAE J3400 task force. We're moving very quickly with the standard, and I think there's a there's a there's still a bit of a misunderstanding because I think a lot of people think that we're just taking the Tesla port, the Tesla plug, the way it is. It's, it's always been, and then just making it so everyone can use it. What, what is really happening? Yeah, so the existing NAX connector uh, is in its current form as of you know today is mostly deployed as a 500 volts DC charging kind of plug. And uh, Tesla had uh, released, um, you know, prior to the standardization efforts, they worked the industry and were trying to get people to adopt NAX prior to Ford doing it. And they had introduced um, the thousand volt uh, version of NAX. Uh, they had not deployed that yet. And so in a way, NAX uh, in 3400, 3400 is really the next generation of NAX connectors. It supports higher voltages, more uh, styles of connecting for AC charging. So I would say that you know everything NAX was is part of 3400, mm -hmm. but now it's standardized, there's features that have been added in, there's additional functions, but at the core of it, you have that interoperability with this sort of existing connector system. That's the majority market share uh, system currently in North America. So let's go through the features. Let's talk a little bit about the move from, from 500 volt to 1000 volt, mm -hmm. which is coming with the standard. Yeah. So uh, CCS, uh, J1772 systems, had started that transition through, you know, Electrify America deployments, ChargePoint, et cetera. Over the last couple of years, uh, you're seeing a couple um, OEMs release 1,000 volt capable cars, whether it's from German automakers or American automakers. They all have that in the roadmap. Um, even Hyundai, Ionix um, have a higher voltage battery pack. And that really is how you enable um, faster charging mm -hmm. uh, without increasing the current, making a heavier cable, of course, is to increase the voltage. And sort of that um, transition is also being done for, you know, bigger vehicles. You know, you think of um, vans and trucks and to sort of move up, up the line to bigger vehicles, they need a faster DC charge rate. So that, be, that change coming in 3400 is something the industry is currently transitioning to. So that's gonna be a big improvement to sort of get those towards those gasoline equivalent fill times. That's a really important part of that. It basically means that as standardized, um, you can get up to almost a megawatt with NAX uh, down the road. So part of bringing electric vehicles to everyone is making it more affordable to um, charge your car where you park. Uh, we want to be able to do that to increase our utilization of renewables, uh, to bring electric vehicles to people who are in the lower income brackets that can't afford to pay, you know, 55 cents per kilowatt to charge. So um, what we want, what we wanted to do in 3400 is just to look at the solutions that are used around the world. And pretty much everywhere else in the world, they have the option to have um, charging stations, which are very low cost infrastructure where mm -hmm. it's pretty much just a place where you can bring your cable and sort of plug it in. Uh, when you think of street parking, uh, there are a lot of logistical challenges, whether you're in an area with snow or whether you're in an area that, um, you know, you need to have street sweepers come through. 
Uh, it's fine if you want to add some electric vehicles to the grassy knoll over at the suburban Aldi. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about bringing charging into higher density areas, parking garages ha that are pretty dark, having cables laying on the ground, infrastructure that people drive over and don't own and don't care about, yeah. it makes it really hard to, let's say, let's have 10, 20, 5% of those parking spots electrified. Yeah. So to do that, we're adopting what the rest of the world uses, which is a way of AC charging where you bring your own cable, uh, at least as an option. Uh, certainly you don't have to have that for your garage or sites where it makes more sense to have a permanently attached cable. We wanna bring that in because we want to have people to be able to, to have their car plugged in where they park. That removes the need to have um, to for that trip to you know have to stop to charge kind of on the way home or on the way out is just to charge when the car's parked. Passenger cars spend most of their time parked. Yeah. So you think a parking fun. garage where you have 25% of the spots electrified, if you have all those cords laying there, it's just stuff to get in the way mm -hmm. when it's when you don't need to charge in for, to get damaged. It's not a theory. Mm -hmm. It's what everyone <laughs> else does with AC charging infrastructure, mm -hmm. or at least they have the option to do it. And we want to have that option in North America too. You pushed for uh, a system in order to make it actually cheaper to deploy J3400 than it is the current CCS. Yeah, so it's, it gets a little bit into the weeds, but you know, the technical stuff is at the heart of what we do with standardization. So uh, NAX vehicles, generally, people might not know that generally speaking, J1772 vehicles went from you know 120 volts, which is the kind of you know outlets we have just our domestic outlets we have in our houses through to, you know, including 208, which is a popular single phase commercial uh, voltage, and then 240, which is generally what we have in our houses. Um, but one of the most popular commercial voltages that you get delivered from a utility or urban areas is uh, 480 volts, three phase, and the single phase version of that is 277 volts. Tesla's vehicles supported that. And part of it goes back to Tesla when they came out with the S, they were building charging stations, uh, infrastructure and vehicles. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that happens when you install um, co at commercial locations or urban locations, if you get over a certain threshold in kilowatts, the utility is gonna tell you okay, you want a 500 kVA transformer, you're gonna to need to take that amount of power as 480 volts, 277. Currently, with the old system, you couldn't directly utilize that. Mm -hmm. So you had to install an intermediate customer-owned transformer to bump that voltage down. You get efficiency losses. Now you're using lower voltage, so you got bigger wires, bigger conduit. Uh, you need a whole nother breaker panel because you have to have the 480 volt panel and then you have to have the 208, uh, 120 panel there too. And so all of that was increasing costs to install AC chargers. Mm -hmm. We want electric vehicles to be able to utilize power in North America that comes from the utility uh, on the customer facing side. And so supporting all the common um, US single phase voltages was uh, a super majority of participants in the standard supported that because they saw it as key to mass electrification and reducing costs and making it more feasible to uh, install charging stations. And it's very much related to um, bring your own cable. I mentioned street lighting is often 277. Mm -hmm. And so not utilizing those existing circuits, but being able to use that same feed from the utility and run some new conduit and not have to bring in a whole um, set of additional infrastructure and transformers that now mm -hmm. we have to figure out where to put those. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so again, this is, a, this is a space problem. The space is very valuable. We don't want to take as little of it up as possible in public spaces to bring electric vehicle charging to um, parking locations. The, the actual port, the plug, there's, yeah. there's, there's, there's a difference. And, and, and can, can you mm -hmm. go through, I and mean, it's not a huge difference, and you mm -hmm. kind of have to like, someone would have to show you one, you know, one against the other, but why, why, like why was, why is yeah, it Yeah, so if you look at the NAX connector that's on the superchargers now, the front face of it is kind of like a round, it's kind of like a, a rounded off, uh, kind of, it's a little flatter on the bottom, it's a little rounded on the bottom, but that 
front of it is continuous. Mm -hmm. uh, and in order to move to uh, 1,000 volts maximum DC voltage, uh, there are a number of considerations you have to look at. And it has to do with what you call creepage and clearance. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so that you don't have uh, an arc go between if there's like a bunch of dirt or water or some kind of material that's somewhat conductive. You don't want the plus and the minus or to the ground. You don't want current to be able to flow. Mm -hmm. So th the way to say it is, you know, you can take the thousand volt station and plug it into the 500 volt car. The way it always works is of course your DC battery voltage changes. So the station always has to configure itself to charge that battery. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a whole pre-charge and communication on what voltage they go to. But in order for the connector uh, to support the higher voltages, there are some small physical differences. Mostly there's some plastic material removed mm -hmm. in some places to allow it to go to the higher voltage. We refer in the standard to the old configuration as sort of the next legacy configuration, and we refer to the new one as the, the J3400 uh, connector versus the next legacy connector. We'll currently have to see how it goes in the industry. Mm -hmm. For example, some people have suggested that they're gonna to continue to use the legacy connector for AC applications. That's fine in one sense, because um, for AC charging, we don't go above uh, 500, 500 volts. Yeah. So uh, we don't need to have the thousand volt connector necessarily for that. The standard requires interoperability between the two. So yeah. it's required that, you know, the old connector fits into, you know, they fit into each other, um, vice versa. So that we don't have a situation where, you know, Ford's vehicle doesn't plug into the existing NAX stations, you know, so we don't want that. Uh, nobody wants that. Yeah. The whole point of switching to NAX uh, for the industry is that Nax was already two thirds of the DC chargers currently deployed. So yeah. uh, you wouldn't want to switch into a system and then be not physically compatible with it. Mm -hmm. But they are different. This standard covers mechanicals, uh, electrical, uh, communications, even gets into security. A lot of it we do by referencing other standards. Mm -hmm. So we're building on a giant pyramid of a foundation of existing standards. Uh, but the document itself is, you know, under 100 pages. We're trying to um, get this standard published so that, and this has been public statements by the Joint Office of you know, Energy and uh, Transportation, they want NACS published as uh, a mature technical document so that they can make NACS fully eligible for a lot of the federal funding as part of the bipartisan infrastructure bill. To make all of this happen, beginning in 2025, you should see more and more automakers putting SAE standard J3400 ports on their vehicles. For more information about standards, including J3400, EVs, batteries, and sustainability, be sure to subscribe to SAE International.